This episode is brought to you by IVP. We may say that the Bible is God's word, but do we truly believe that it's trustworthy? Author Susan Lim believes that we may not fully comprehend the context that formed what we now call the Bible. In her book, Light of the Word, Lim recounts how the Bible was assembled and shows the trustworthiness of Scripture through her compelling historical study. And as a listener of this podcast, you can receive Light of the Word for 25% off when you use the promo code IVPOD25. That's IVPOD25 at IVPress.com. This is IVP. Listening to Get in the Word with Truth's Table. Your word is truth, your word is life. Presented by Innervar City Press. Your word is truth, your word is life. The Daily Audio Bible Podcast, read by Dr. Christina Edmondson. And Akemini Uwan. Let's get in the Word, and may the Word get in us. Open our eyes, that we may behold wonderful things in your Word. Old Testament reading, Judges chapter 6 through Judges chapter 7. Oppression and Confrontation The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight, so the Lord turned them over to Midian for seven years. The Midianites overwhelmed Israel. Because of Midian, the Israelites made shelters for themselves in the hills, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and the people from the east would attack them. They invaded the land and devoured its crops all the way to Gaza. They left nothing for the Israelites to eat, and they took away the sheep, oxen, and donkeys. When they invaded with their cattle and tents, they were as thick as locusts. Neither they nor their camels could be counted. They came to devour the land. Israel was so severely weakened by Midian that the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. When the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help because of Midian, the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites. He said to them, This is what the Lord God of Israel has said. I brought you up from Egypt and took you out of that place of slavery. I rescued you from Egypt's power and from the power of all who oppressed you. I drove them out before you and gave their land to you. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living, but you have disobeyed me. Gideon meets some visitors. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak tree in Ophrah, owned by Joash the Abizarite. He arrived while Joash's son Gideon was threshing wheat in a winepress so he could hide it from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared and said to him, The Lord is with you, courageous warrior. Gideon said to him, Pardon me, but if the Lord is with us, why has such disaster overtaken us? Where are all his miraculous deeds our ancestors told us about? They said, Did the Lord not bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to Midian. Then the Lord himself turned to him and said, You have the strength. Deliver Israel from the power of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Gideon said to him, But Lord, how can I deliver Israel? Just look. My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the youngest of my family. The Lord said to him, Ah, but I will be with you. You will strike down the whole Midianite army. Gideon said to him, If you really are pleased with me, then give me a sign as proof that it is really you speaking with me. Do not leave this place until I come back with a gift and present it to you. The Lord said, I will stay here until you come back. Gideon went and prepared a young goat along with unleavened bread made from an ephah of flour. He put the meat in a basket and the broth in a pot. He brought the food to him under the oak tree and presented it to him. God's angel said to him, put the meat and unleavened bread on this rock and pour out the broth. Gideon did as instructed. The angel of the Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread with the tip of his staff. Fire flared up from the rock and consumed the meat and unleavened bread. The angel of the Lord then disappeared. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he said, Oh no, sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. The Lord said to him, You are safe. 
Do not be afraid. You are not going to die. Gideon built an altar for the Lord there and named it. The Lord is on friendly terms with me. To this day, it is still there in Ophrah of the Ebezerites. Gideon destroys the altar. That night, the Lord said to him, Take the bull from your father's herd, as well as a second bull, one that is seven years old. Pull down your father's bow altar and cut down the nearby Asherah pole. Then build an altar for the Lord your God on the top of the stronghold according to the proper pattern. Take the second bull and offer it as a burnt sacrifice on the wood from the Asherah pole that you cut down. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did just as the Lord had told him. He was too afraid of his father's family and the men of the city to do it in broad daylight, so he waited until night. Nighttime. When the men of the city got up the next morning, they saw the Baal altar pulled down, the nearby Asherah pole cut down, and the second bull sacrificed on the newly built altar. They said to one another, Who did this? They investigated the matter thoroughly and concluded that Gideon, son of Joash, had done it. The men of the city said to Joash, Bring out your son so we can execute him. He pulled down the Baal altar and cut down the nearby Asherah pole. But Joash said to all those who confronted him, Must you fight Baal's battles? Must you rescue him? Whoever takes up his cause will die by morning. If he really is a god, let him fight his own battles. After all, it was his altar that was pulled down. That very day, Gideon's father named him Jerub Baal because he had said, let Baal fight with him for it was his altar that was pulled down. Gideon summons an army and seeks confirmation. All the Midianites, Amalekites, and the people from the east assembled. They crossed the Jordan River and camped in the Jezreel Valley. The Lord's Spirit took control of Gideon. He blew a trumpet, summoning the Abizarites to follow him. He sent messengers through Mount Manasseh and summoned them to follow him as well. He also sent messengers through Mount Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali, and they came up to meet him. Gideon said to God, If you really intend to use me to deliver Israel as you promised, then give me a sign as proof. Look, I am putting a wool fleece on the threshing floor. If there is dew only on the fleece and the ground around it is dry, then I will be sure that you will use me to deliver Israel as you promised. The Lord did as he asked. When he got up the next morning, he squeezed the fleece and enough dew dripped from it to fill a bowl. Gideon said to God, Please do not get angry at me when I ask for just one more sign. Please allow me one more test with the fleece. This time, make only the fleece dry while the ground around it is covered with dew. That night, God did as he asked. Only the fleece was dry and the ground around it was covered with dew. Judges chapter 7 Gideon reduces the ranks. Jerub Baal, that is Gideon, and his men got up the next morning and camped near the spring of Harad. The Midianites were camped north of them near the hill of Moray in the valley. The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many men for me to hand Midian over to you. Israel might brag. Our own strength has delivered us. Now announce to the men, whoever is shaking with fear, may turn around and leave Mount Gilead. 22,000 men went home. 10,000 remained. The Lord spoke to Gideon again. There are still too many men. Bring them down to the water and I will thin the ranks some more. When I say, this one should go with you, pick him to go. When I say, this one should not go with you, do not take him. So he brought the men down to the water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, separate those who lap the water as a dog laps from those who kneel to drink. Only 300 men lapped with their hands to their mouths. The rest of the men kneeled to drink water. The Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 men who lap, I will deliver the whole army and I will hand Midian over to you. The rest of the men should go home. The men who were chosen took supplies in their trumpets. Gideon said, sent all the men of Israel back to their homes. He kept only 300 men. Now the Midianites were camped down below in the valley. Gideon reassured a victory. That night, the Lord said to Gideon, get up, attack the camp for I am handing it over to you. But if you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with Purah, your servant, and listen to what they are saying. Then you will be brave and attack the camp. So he went down with Purah, his servant, to where the sentries were guarding the camp. Now the Midianites, Amalekites, and the people from the east covered the valley like a swarm of locusts. Their camels could not be counted. They were as innumerable as the sand on the seashore. When Gideon arrived, he heard a man telling another man about a dream he had. The man said, look, I had a dream. I saw a stale cake of barley bread rolling into the Midianite camp. It hit a tent so hard and knocked it over and turned it upside down. The tent just collapsed. The other man said, without a doubt, this symbolizes the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God is handing Midian and all the army over to him. Gideon routes the enemy. When Gideon heard the report of the dream and its interpretation, he praised God. Then he went back to the Israelite camp and said, Get up, for the Lord is handing the Midianite army over to you. He divided the 300 men into three units. He gave them all trumpets and empty jars with torches inside them. He said to them, watch me and do as I do. Watch closely. I am going to the edge of the camp. 
do as I do. When I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, you also blow your trumpets all around the camp. Then say, for the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon took 100 men to the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch just after they had changed the guards. They blew their trumpets and broke the jars they were carrying. All three units blew their trumpets and broke their jars. They held the torches in their left hand and the trumpets in their right. Then they yelled, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. They stood in order all around the camp. The whole Midianite army ran away. They shouted as they scrambled away. When the 300 men blew their trumpets, the Lord caused the Midianites to attack one another with their swords throughout the camp. The army fled to Beth Shitta on their way to Zerara. They went to the border of Abel Mehola near Tabah. Israelites from Natali, Asher, and Manasseh answered the call and chased the Midianites. Gideon appeases the Ephraimites. Now Gideon sent messengers throughout the Ephraimite hill country who announced, go down and head off the Midianites. Take control of the fords of the streams all the way to Beth Barah and the Jordan River. When all the Ephraimites had assembled, they took control of the fords all the way to Beth Barah and the Jordan River. They captured the two Midianite generals, Oreb and Zeb. They executed Oreb on the rock of Oreb and Zeb in the winepress of Zeb. They chased the Midianites and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon who was now on the other side of the Jordan River. Psalm chapter 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God as long as I exist. Do not trust in princes or in human beings who cannot deliver. Their life's breath departs. They return to the ground. On that day, their plans die. How blessed is the one whose helper is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, the one who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who remains forever faithful, vindicates the oppressed, and gives food to the hungry. The Lord releases the imprisoned. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up all who are bent over. The Lord loves the godly. The Lord protects the resident foreigner. He lifts up the fatherless and the widow, but he opposes the wicked. The Lord rules forever. Your God, O Zion. Throughout the generations to come, praise the Lord. Your word is true. New Testament reading, Titus chapter 1, Salutation, from Paul, a slave of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to further the faith of God's chosen ones and the knowledge of the truth that is in keeping with godliness in hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before time began. But now, in his own time, he has made his message evident through the preaching I was entrusted with according to the command of God our Savior, to Titus, my genuine son in a common faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior, Titus's task on Crete. The reason I left you in Crete was to set in order the remaining matters and to appoint elders in every town as I directed you. An elder must be blameless, the husband of one wife, with faithful children who cannot be charged with dissipation or rebellion. For the overseer must be blameless as one entrusted with God's work, not arrogant, not prone to anger, not a drunkard, not violent, not greedy for gain. Instead, he must be hospitable, devoted to what is good, sensible, upright, devout and self-controlled. He must hold firmly to the faithful message as it has been taught, so that he will be able to give exhortation in such healthy teaching and correct those who speak against it. For there are many rebellious people, idle talkers and deceivers, especially those with Jewish connections, who must be silenced because they mislead whole families by teaching for dishonest gain what ought not to be taught. A certain one of them, in fact, one of their own prophets said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. Such testimonies testimony is true. For this reason, rebuke them sharply that they may be healthy in the faith and not pay attention to Jewish myths and commands of people who reject the truth. All is pure to those who are pure, but to those who are corrupt and unbelieving, nothing is pure, but both their minds and consciences are corrupted. They profess to know God, but with their deeds, they deny him since they are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for any good deed." This is the word of God for the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us go boldly 
to God's throne of grace. Gracious God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your word, oh God. And thank you, oh God, for, for just seeing, oh God, showing us how gracious you are, oh God, through Gideon's story, oh God. The many times that Gideon asked you for a sign, oh God, and you are gracious and merciful enough to oblige his requests, oh Lord God. Thank you, oh God, that you, oh Lord God, that you put up, oh Lord God, and that you are gracious, oh God, and empathetic, oh God, because you know our frame, oh God. You remember that we are dust, oh Lord. Thank you, oh Lord God, and forgive us for the times, oh Lord God, that we lack faith, oh God, or where we doubt you, oh Lord, or we're unsure, oh Lord, whether we really heard from you, oh God, or whether you're really directing us on this path, oh Lord God, although you've probably made it very clear to us in so many different ways through confirming it with friends and probably family, oh Lord God, through our own times, oh God, in prayer and reading your word, oh God, when you're directing us down a path, oh Lord God, we're fearful, oh God, or we're unsure, Lord God. And so we ask you for signs, oh God, just thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you're gracious enough, oh Lord God, to oblige and to answer in the affirmative, oh God, to get in, oh God, and to really hand the victory over to Gideon, oh God, and the Israelites. Thank you for that, oh Lord God. And I thank you that our victory belongs in you, oh Lord God. Would you help us, oh Lord God? Would you help us to know, oh God, that it's by grace through faith, oh Lord God, that we are believers in Jesus, oh God. And, and we know that it's about the object of our faith, not necessarily the size of our faith, oh God. But when we are struggling, oh God, when we echo the sentiments, oh God, that are in Mark 9, I believe 24, that says, oh, I believe, but help my unbelief, oh Lord. This is the story, oh Lord God, of so many of us, oh Lord, where it's like we believe, oh Lord, but help our unbelief, oh Lord God. Help our doubts, oh Lord God. Be gracious with us. Be patient with us, oh Lord. Continue to be patient with us. Lord, thank you that in Gideon's story, we can see bountiful mercy. We can see your bountiful grace, oh Lord God, that you bestowed on him and that you're bestowing on us, oh Lord God, because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. So God, I pray that you would be with us. Be patient with those who doubt, oh Lord God, and that you would just continue, oh God, to stir up our faith. Help us to trust you and to believe once again, oh God, for things, oh God, that we have given up on in prayer. Lord, help us to continue to pray and to give these petitions over to you, knowing that you hear us, oh Lord, and that if it be your will, you will grant us the answers, oh God, the yes and amens, oh Lord God, in your timing and according to your will. Pray this in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Amen. We pray this time of getting the word with Truth Table has encouraged us all to not only be hearers of God's word, but doers. Share your reflections on these scriptures with us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag get in the word and hashtag truths table. Saints, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Go with God. Get in the Word with Truth Table is a production of InterVarsity Press. For 75 years, IVP has created and published resources that deepen lives for Christ to engage the university, church, and the world. Visit ivpress.com for more information. Our Bible reading plan is from biblestudytogether.com, and the Bible version is the new English translation used by permission. Sound engineering is from Pottery Studios, and our executive producer is Helen Lee. Let's go, so I'll take